Hi, welcome to Ramco TV. My name is Jeremy Honnold. Today, we're going to remote teach and remote monitor a fiber optic amplifier using IO-Link and Ethernet IP. Okay, so let's assume for this application that I want an output to turn on when the sensor detects this yellow part and ignore the white part and ignore the black part. Let's further assume that the customer would like to communicate using Ethernet IP and they want to be able to adjust the threshold levels remotely. So one way to solve this application is to use a Panasonic IO-Link fiber optic amplifier, the FX551L. Now we're going to take that FX551L IO-Link sensor into a Turk IO-Link master that communicates via Ethernet IP. One very, very cost-effective Ethernet IP PLC that we can use is the Panasonic FP0H. The FP0H has an Ethernet IP port and it'll allow cyclical communications between the sensor and the PLC. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and set set this up and I'll show how this works. What I put together here is an Omron S8VK power supply, TE connectivity terminal blocks, a Panasonic FP0H PLC with Ethernet IP capability, the Panasonic FX551L fiber optic amplifier, and a Turk IO-Link uh, master with Ethernet IP. This is the TBEN style IO-Link master. Here I've taken an FD42G uh, Panasonic fiber optic cable along with the FXMR2 focusing lens and connected it to uh, this really nice uh, mounting hardware that Panasonic offers the MS uh, AJ type brackets. What this will allow me to do is a fiber optic cable going to this uh, lens that allows you to focus the beam of light to a really small pinpoint beam which is very very nice for picking up very small targets and that kind of thing. And here we have a three and a half inch uh, GT03 Panasonic HMI and this will allow us to uh, uh, remotely monitor the light intensity as well as go in and adjust the uh, threshold levels remotely. So the first thing that you have to do is set up the Turk IO-Link master with the IP address and also configure it to uh, communicate with the IO-Link sensor. Now, I've done all those things previously and actually we have a couple of videos uh, showing how to do that. So once you have the IP address and the IODD files downloaded to the IO-Link master, what we'll do is we'll go into FPWIN Pro, which is Panasonic's uh, programming software, and we'll go to New Project, and we'll select the PLC type, in this case the FP0H32ET, uh, and we we'll just give it a name. So we'll just do IO-Link uh, IO Demo, Create Project. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go over here and configure it for Ethernet IP communications. So we'll go over here to Ethernet, Addresses, and this is where you would uh, add the IP address for your PLC that you want to use. And then you go down here to the Ethernet IP to uh, set up your uh, configurator and, and uh, the connection. And we'll just go here to settings, Ethernet IP basic configuration. And uh, one important thing here is to set it uh, for auto allocation off. That way the, uh, the information that's coming in 
from the uh, from the Ethernet IP master, we can give it a specific address for that data to go to. The other thing you're going to have to do is register uh, the EDS file, and you can download the EDS file from Turk's uh, website. Uh, I've done this previously, but basically once you do that, you uh, navigate to where the EDS files are located and then select your uh, IOLink master. In this case, it is the uh, TBEN uh, S24IOL EDS file. So you would just select that and then uh, uh, it'll go over here and be placed in this device list. So. If we look through the different devices over here, they'll see the TBEN S2 uh, IOLINK master, and you just uh, click it and uh, move it up into the scan list. Here is where you want to put the IP address that you created for your IOLINK master, and uh, that's already put in here for me, so that's the address I uh, chose when I uh, configured it originally. And you go to exclusive owner. And this is where we're going to set up the addresses uh, for the data. So we'll click Add, and then uh, we'll put it into a DT. And we'll start with DT10, and in this case, we're going to want to use uh, four words. So we'll set up for that, and now you're registering that uh, that data area. Another thing that uh, can be kind of important to do here is uh, setting up your uh, configuration data and this would be for example uh, we're going to have the sensor connected to the IOLINK port 1 this particular module has four ports and here is where you would set up uh, your data mapping so if you set this for uh, a swap 16-bit you can change it there um, I set it up for direct so we'll keep it as direct Just click OK and then uh, we'll go ahead and we'll connect to the PLC make sure that uh, all those settings are correct and we're communicating properly okay looks like everything is uh, working properly. We can go up here to um, Entry Data Monitor. We know that the DTs that we selected for the addresses are DT10. DT11. DT12. Okay, so um, DT13 in this particular case is the incident light level. You can see it goes up. I'm putting my hand in front of the fiber optic amplifier. And you can also see DT11 goes from zero to two and that's the actual output of the sensor so those are the two uh, um, data memories that we're going to be uh, uh, working with today okay so let's go ahead and we'll write a simple program here okay I'm gonna go in here and uh, declare my variables We know that the uh, fiber output was DT11. And we know the light level was DT13. And let's go ahead and we'll do a lower threshold and we'll just make that D DT100 and we'll make an 
upper. Let's see here. Upper threshold, and we'll make that DT 101. And then we'll just do a fiber amp output. I'll explain this in a minute. Um, we need to create, what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert, um, we're gonna convert the word data to a Boolean so we can actually get an on off signal out of it. So we'll make that a, we'll make that R100. And then we'll go ahead and make it like a, a virtual fiber output. Oops. We'll make that R101. And I may just go ahead and make an indicator, although I don't think we'll show it in this uh, tutorial. That'll be like a, that's like a real world address out of the PLC. I think I've got you know, global variables. Move them over here to the program. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the instructions and we're gonna look for word word bool put that in here fiber output and make that the fiber amp output oops okay like i said that's that's going to convert the uh, word into a um, and word into a boolean. Okay, so let's see. Next thing we're going to do is the light intensity uh, threshold levels. Uh, so we'll do we'll look for a greater than. Oops. That over there. I called that light level light level and then this is going to be lower threshold and then we'll just store this in a R102 and then we'll do a we'll do a less than And that'll be light level. Upper threshold. We'll do that R103. And then we'll just come here and grab a couple of Output. Other output. This one will be our indicator. This one will be our virtual. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, have an HMI screen that's going to have an indicating light that turns on and turn off. And then here, if I wanted to, I can uh, connect an actual output out of the PLC. Um, here we're gonna put R102 and R103. Okay, so 
uh, the, the idea behind this is uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an HMI screen where I'm going to allow you to go in and uh, uh, set up a lower threshold level and an upper threshold level and when the incident light level is in between these two values then the output will turn on so when this one and this one are, are made then we'll get this output to turn on so pr pretty simple stuff okay so we'll go ahead and um, compile it and I didn't declare these variables so that's the warnings but it looks like we're good and let's go ahead and uh, I'll set up the HMI screen um, off camera and then we'll come right back and uh, take a look at this so right here we have the incident light level I put together a little simple bar graph to also show that and this right here is the real-world fiber optic output so as I move a part in front of the sensor you can see the incident light level changing and you can see that it matches the threshold or the incident light level on the fiber optic amplifier you can also see the output light on the fiber optic amplifier and the output light on the display Okay, so we're going to go to this screen here, and we're looking at the white part, and you can see the incident light level is around 3600. On the yellow part, it's 2300. And on the black part, it's around 655. Okay, so on the lower threshold level, we'll, we'll put that around 1200. And then for the upper threshold, we'll put that around 3000. So now that when we're on the yellow part, the output is on. When we're on the black part, the output is off. And when we're on the white part, the output is off. White part, output's off. Yellow part, output's on. Black part, output's off. White part, output's off, on off off on off off on off if you have any questions please reach out to us at ramkawai.com or give us a call 800-280-6933 if you found this video informative please consider giving us a like and also don't forget to subscribe as we have many more videos coming your way. Thanks a lot.